Thank you so much. We will start off. We were just waiting for our last, last um, visitor. Um, good morning, everyone. Bonjour. Buenos dias. 
Um, good morning to the special guests. Let me introduce them one by one. Mrs. Carolyn Trebotskoy, our CBF Chair of Directors. I will introduce her in a short while. The Permanent Secretary, Mr. Ryan Anslam for the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and Blue and Green Economy. And Mr. Albert Paul, of course, the Chair of the Dominica National Conservation Trust Fund, the DNCTF. And of course, all of you guys, the representative of, in total, we are with Dominica, 10 countries. So we're representing 10 countries, um, 10 national conservation trust funds. I will not go through all of the names right now, but you know who you are. Thank you so much for being here with us. And of course, the CBF staff and team that has joined us in this capacity building workshop. Let me first start off for those who are not aware that the CBF started in 2012, aiming to secure long-term funding for conservation and sustainable development in the Caribbean. Um, as a conservation trust fund, we are here to play the key role in sustaining conservation and even more importantly, in spurring innovation. And in addition also to ensure that we are as a conservation trust fund and we are together here, 10 conservation trust funds, a suitable vehicle for investment capital, offset funding, and other important revenue sources. This is the official in-person capacity building effort from the CBF in this calendar year. And we are really looking forward to a week of networking, learning, um, engaging with each other, knowing um, what the other funds are doing, um, and really sharing those experiences across the 10 different countries. The workshop, again, is targeted towards the executive staff of 10 partner conservation trust funds and the CBF, and will focus on accountability reporting for conservation trust funds. Again, the enhancement of the outreach and impact of conservation trust funds in meeting donor demands requires us as conservation trust funds to increase transparency and accountability towards donors, towards partners, and towards stakeholders. And for that reason, we are here together this week to go through a series of um, topics. We have an excellent, um, uh, we have two excellent facilitators actually who are going to be with us this week to go through some of these topics. And in addition, we really truly hope that this workshop enables networking among the CBF, among you guys as conservation trust funds, strengthening and advancing actions towards conserving the biodiversity aligned to your national, but also international priorities, including the global biodiversity framework commitments. And with that, I will stop here and I will hand over to the next speaker who is Mrs. Carolyn Trebetskoy. Let me just introduce Carolyn just briefly. I know she has a really long history. Um, I, I, I wanted to summarize this Carolyn because it's really long, but Carolyn, she hails from St. Lucia. And Caroline is the Executive Director, Marketing and Operations of award-winning resorts Anne's Chestnut and Jade Mountain Resort in Soufrier, St. Lucia. Jade Mountain Resort is renowned not only for its luxurious accommodations and the stunning views of the Pitons, but also for the commitment to environmental conservation and sustainability. In July 2020, Caroline accepted the chairmanship of the St. Lucia National Conservation Fund and in this capacity has joined the board of the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund. In September 2022, the board of directors of the CBF elected Mrs. Torbetskoy as the new chairperson. And she's the first non-donor chairperson. She's the first woman chair. She's the second only chair of the CBF representing partner conservation trust funds. And in this regard, the St. Lucia National Conservation Trust Fund and a, pos a position that she currently holds and that we are very, very grateful that she has found time in her busy schedule to be with us here today. Thank you so much, Carolyn. The floor is yours. Good morning. Well, that was quite an introduction. <laughs> well, um, protocol has been established, but let me uh, thank Permanent Secretary, Mr. Ryan Anselm to be with us this morning. And of course, it's a pleasure to be here with our chair from Dominica, Albert Paul, who is also a fellow director on the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund, and uh, the team of the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund, which over the years has grown from four to now 22 team members. 
So welcome, and of course, a very special welcome to the CEOs and uh, participants from our 10 National Conservation Trust Funds. I want to say bienvenue to Kitea from Haiti and bienvenido to Judith and Luz, and I hope that the proceedings today will all be easily to follow, so easy to follow. So thank you for being here with us. Um, I have obviously two hats, but I'm here as Chair Caribbean Biodiversity Fund, but it gives me pleasure to also be here as the Chair of the St. Lucia National Conservation Trust Fund. And I have a great deal of respect of what has been accomplished so far with these National Conservation Trust Funds. You're all autonomous, fully incorporated structures, and you have so much potential. And as we're kicking off this workshop today, I think the, what we really want to see coming out of it, that you feel empowered, that you feel stronger, and that we can help you with this capacity building to make even more progress, all with the aim to protect our national heritage, to preserve and conserve our terrestrial and marine environments, and of course, in the process, also build sustainable livelihoods. So I, I am delighted to be here. She said, I have a very busy schedule, it's true, but um, not only did I want to be here and, and support the, the, the event, I also was secretly delighted it was Dominica. So <laughs> that also was a deciding factor. And um, as you um, have heard a little bit about me, I just want to explain to you how I ended up really in the field of biodiversity. And it didn't just happen like that. I um, held a lot of volunteer leadership positions over the years. I was the president of the St. Lucia Hospitality and Tourism Association for over 10 years. That's four terms of service. I was, again, um, well, the second woman, the only second woman to, to be allowed to be the president of the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association. And that was from 2016 to 2018. And you know what? Normally, a president of Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association would be focused on marketing the region, but I didn't have a normal day in office. We had the first impact of Sargassum, then we had Sika, and then we had the devastating 2017 hurricanes. And honestly, it's just changed my entire outlook of where I should put my volunteer leadership skills and where we needed to make progress and how we could build better resilience. And so I was appointed chair of the Caribbean uh, envoy of the Caribbean Challenge Initiative, if you remember that. And uh, that is, of course, the sort of core out of which the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund was born in 2012. And um, because in St. Lucia, the St. Lucia Hotel Association was, in fact, a founding member of the National Conservation Fund, I was invited to sit on the board, became the chair, and then little did I know that I had I would be chair, appointed chair of the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund, as Tanya said, only the second chair in the history. I can't tell you how happy I am, though, to be here because my relationship with Dominica was always including heartache because I was always in an official role with the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association when Hurricane Erica struck, when you were impacted by, by the Hurricanes Maria in 2017, and uh, so I did a lot of fundraising for Dominica, and um, in, I had a chance yesterday to go by the Colibristi School, which was re-erected after Erica, with funds that I really personally, in a way, raised through the Hotel Association with my colleagues there, and it was very meaningful to me, and uh, I would have to say it helped me yesterday. I had a day with a friend, Gregor Nassif, to show me Dominica, and I could correct my my vision of Dominica, I could now have, I have some really positive, wonderful visions and, um, and it was very important to me, but, um, I have loaded boats after boats after Maria to, to bring assistance here, which of course was just a drop on the hot stone. I know how bad it was, but it was still very meaningful. I'm, I'm so happy to be here. And as chair of the St. Lucia National Conservation Fund, I want to, now say to Dominica, we are also your neighbors and we are more than happy to support you further. It is wonderful that we have reached this milestone with Dominica. Um, German Development Bank uh, made funding available to you in 2019. And then, of course, we were able to sign the full partnership agreement with Dominica in uh, December 2022. 
And so now we want to also assist you to go to the next phase where you can do your grant making, where you can protect, where you can promote um, projects, where you can, in fact, help Dominica to sustain your incredible national heritage. And uh, I think that uh, whatever we can do to help you, and also I hope it's going to be a great workshop, I'm really looking forward to being part of it. And with that, I just hope we're going to have a great time. We're going to have a successful outcome. And it's a real pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Caroline. All right, let me introduce the next speaker. He is the second only also chair of the Dominica National Conservation Trust Fund, the DNCTF, who is our national partner here in Dominica. Um, they were established very recently, so it's a very new organization, as Caroline was saying. They were established by mid-2022. We would have signed what we would call a pre-financing agreement by September 2022, and the, the partnership agreement itself in December 2022, which brought me here for the first time in Dominica. Um, this is my second or third time in Dominica, but again, it's a real pleasure to be here. Um, and for various reasons, we have chosen Dominica as the host country for this capacity building workshop. Not only the, the reasons of, of, of being the beautiful island, but also again, to show our commitment, Prime Minister, um, PS and also Albert and the representatives of the DNCTF, the Dominica National Conservation Trust Fund, to show the commitment from CBF to support Dominica and DNCTF, um, to channel the funding that we have available to Dominica. So please um, let us network, reach out to us, um, sit together. We actually do have next week, specifically with the DNCTF, um, two days of board retreat where we will go through some of the processes. But actually, Greg Henry, as the CEO of the St. Lucia National Conservation Trust, has also graciously accepted the offer to stay behind and sit down with the board because of the experience and the lessons learned that he can convey to the DNCTF. And with that, I would like to ask Albert Paul for his opening remarks. Thank you so much, Albert. Good morning. Is this on? Yes, and a very hot you welcome to Dominica. Uh, usually my speeches are very short and I will Keep to that <laughs> theme. Uh, development, I believe, is a necessary evil. But often the cost of development is far-reaching because as we develop, we lose sight of many of our natural gifts that we have been blessed with and have been given. Apologies. My, I'm getting older and my sight is going as well. It is hard to imagine a world without trees or clear, fresh water or deep blue seas filled with varieties of aquatic creatures, plants, sites. But as we continue to degrade and destroy our environment, this I propose will become a very real and very scary possibility. There are persons and organizations around the world and the region and now here in Dominica which have been set up and which have tasked themselves with the goal and purpose of ensuring that there is a future with nature very present and featured prominently. One such organization, which I have the pleasure of chairing, is the Dominican National Conservation Trust Fund. The Dominican National Conservation Trust Fund was set up through the initiative of conceptualized through our partners, the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund. It's a fairly new organization, just about a year old. But um, of course, I know many of the NCTFs here would uh, understand that you do have a lot of teething issues. There are things, there are hiccups along the way. But the goal and the, the purpose of these organizations uh, remains resolute. We need to protect our environment. We need to ensure that we leave something for the future generations. Interestingly, I, I, I'm, I'm going to, to I, and I promise not to be very long. <laughs> uh, I remember growing up and there were mangoes and limes and, and fruits in abundance. Actually, I had several grapefruit trees right outside my door. And 
we took a lot of these things for granted. We went to the river, we went to the seas, and they were vibrant colors and they were, there was beauty all around us, but we also took those things for granted. I don't want to live in a world where our future generations only read about these things. I want to live in a world where we set a platform for future generations to come so that when we leave and being almost 100 years old, I think I'm probably going to leave soon. <laughs> But I, I want to, to, to ensure that, that what we do here is going to resonate not just today, but tomorrow and for many years to come. And I'm happy that organizations like the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund has conceptualized the forming of NCTFs around the region and continue to do wonderful work around the region, uh, not just here in Dominica. Well, we're only just getting started, and I believe that, that the future is bright if we have these sorts of engagements and these sorts of initiatives, not just here in Dominica. And I, I, I'm happy that you decided to have this uh, function in Dominica because, of course, Dominica is setting itself up to be the first climate resilient or the, the first resilient country in the world. And these often are, are, are just words, but uh, they require lots and lots of action. And organizations like the DNCTF, the Carbon Diversity Fund, and all our partners, uh, including yourselves, because we, we, we need to, to build capacity wherever we go, because we don't know it all. And the, the, more, the, more we get in, the more information we get from other persons, the better it's going to be. So again, as I said, I promise to be short. I, I usually talk a lot. I don't normally write things down whenever I come, so that's why I had some difficulty. But I like to talk freely, and, and I'm just happy that to see all these faces here, and I'm happy that we're, we're having this initiative and I look forward to, to wonderful engagement with all of you, and we're going to have a wonderful week. workshop. So again, welcome to Dominica. Of course, it's the, the nature aisle, we have a lot to offer. So please feel free to, to enjoy, spend some time. I mean, we know we're going to do a lot of work. Go to the sea, go to the rivers, enjoy some mangoes. And uh, <laughs> I know at Jungle Bay, they have a variety of fruits, so... Again, thank you and have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, Albert. And yes, there was mango at breakfast. So for those who did have breakfast, um, we did enjoy the beauty and all the tastes of this beautiful island. So the next um, speaker that I want to introduce, and we're really honored also with the participation for from the Ministry of, I have to look very well, I have to read it out because it's a really long name but very important, the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, and Blue and Green Economy, the Permanent Secretary, Mr. Ryan Anslem. We're very happy, again, to have this ministry to be our main partner on, in Dominica. When we received the funding from Germany, the German Development Bank, in 2019, we started the engagement with this specific ministry, and I think that was started in 2020. It was even before my time. But we started the engagement with the ministry um, and we actually elected in September 2022 when the Dominica National Conservation Trust Fund was established. The first um, chair that was, yeah, the first chair that was elected was actually the now honorary Julian DeVoe, the current Minister of State in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Blue and Green Economy with specific responsibility for fisheries and blue economy. We know that he couldn't be here. He um, apologized, but he would have sent the Mr. Ryan Anslem, and we're very happy that you are here uh, with us today and for your opening remarks. Thank you so much, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Madam Moderator. I always start by saying good morning to my Caribbean friends. Buenos dias et bonjour. So these are my three languages I can speak. I bring you greetings from the Ministry of Agriculture, particularly the Minister Honorable Defo, that sends his apologies. It is a profound honor that I welcome each and every one of you to this significant event. I am particularly delighted to extend a warm welcome to Mrs. Carolyn 
two beds, cow, I hope I got that right, and chair of the board of the, she is the chair of the board of the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund, and also Mr. Albert Paul, chair of the Dominican National Conservation Trust Fund. To my distinguished CEOs of the Caribbean, welcome to the Nature Isle of the Caribbean. Some may say of the world, I believe is of the world. So we are happy to host you. Your presence not only enriches our events, but also embodies the spirit of collaboration network that is crucial to our mission of environmental conservation. Today we stand united under the banner of Caribbean Bi 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 Biodiversity Fund, sorry, an exemplary model of regional cooperation and resources mobilization. Supported by the donor-funded Fund Trust Fund, the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund plays a vital role in enhancing our collective effort to conserve biodiversity throughout our region. This week, from April 16th to 19th, we are privileged to host the Capacity Development Workshop in Environmental and Social Management System and Monitoring and Evaluation Learning Frameworks. This initiative is aimed at enhancing the operational capacities of our National Conservation Trust Funds, the Ministry of Agriculture, Blue and Green Economy, is pleased and will endorse and support the objective of this initiative, which is to strengthen the organization as a pillar for environmental stewardship equipped with robust framework and ensure financial sustainability and strong networks. Ladies and gentlemen, we note that the commitment extends beyond more than conservation, but includes fostering growth and resilience. And you will hear that the, the chairman of the, of the Dominica Trust Fund speaks about Dominica becoming the first resilient um, nation. And we endorse all the activities that your organization play in, in enriching that goal. These bodies are instrumental in achieving the ambitious 30 by 30 conservation targets, which seeks to protect 30% of our marine and terrestrial habitat by 2030. Furthermore, the significance of robust environment and social management system cannot be overstated. A well-implemented ESMEs, ESMEs, ensures that conservation projects are conducted with a full understanding of the environmental impacts and social implications. Ladies and gentlemen, the integration of monitoring and evaluation learning framework is equally critical. These frameworks help us only not to track the progress of our conservation efforts, but also to assess their impacts, ensure that each project contributes positively to our and achieving goals of sustainable and ecological balance. Dominica, which is considered as the nature island, and we speak, we boast of this, we are covered 70% of forest, and our marine space is 10, 10, 10 times than our land, so we have a lot to be boastful of. The richness of Dominica biodiversity is not just a natural treasure, it is a vital for our daily needs providing food, shelter, energy, raw materials. And we speak about our wild fauna, our wildlife, that is very important for us. Our government support the Dominican National Conservation Trust Fund and, and encourage everyone to take full advantage of the opportunities that derives from this trust fund. Honorable Julian Defoe, in his former capacity as Chief Fisheries Officer, was instrumental in forging the partnership that led to signing the par partnership agreement with the Dominica National Conservation Trust Fund in November 2022. This partnership highlights the government's commitment to integrated conservation with sustainable development. Dominica biodiversity accounts for 48%, almost 50%, of our local food supply. That means that we get our food, our meat, our fish from our rivers and from our seas. 
fruits and vegetables. That is significant. So when we talk about food security, Dominica, in terms of the biodiversity, it plays a fundamental role. And I'm sure that is equally the same in our Caribbean countries. Biodiversity is also, also provides energy in the form of um, fuel wood and charcoal, one I do not support, but yes, it provides, um, and we have to be mindful of cutting down trees for charcoal. And, and so materials for craft, and I just want to pause for a minute and to highlight the importance of craft for the, our Kalinago um, friends. And, and so um, I'm sure if I mentioned the name, you wouldn't identify, but there's a, 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 a tree that will allow me that our Kalinago friends use to do craft. And um, um, I see my good friend Derek and, 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 um, and um, others from Dominica should show a picture of the beautiful craft of the Kalinago um, people. Wonderful stuff. So again, we need to show and tell a story of how important the biodiversity is. It's not only speak about it, but how important. And last, last, last evening, I had a conversation with the Honorable Minister. We speak of agricultural contribution, agricultural and fisheries contribution. We only speak of export and the crops, but we don't put a figure, monetary figure, for conservation and biodiversity. And I want to leave that with you, to put a figure of your efforts in conservation, and that is important. What is the monetary figure of conserving your biodiversity, of not planting crop in somewhere that poses a risk? You have to put that as a monetary figure. We are very thankful that Dominica has played a leading role in ensuring that our forest is conserved and that we are contributing to the net sink for greenhouse, green, green, greenhouse gases thanks to our lush green forest, as that is detailed in our Dominican National Biodiversity Strategy and Action Plan of 2014-2020. Some strategy that we want to review and, and as we move forward. As we proceed with the plan, planning session over the next few days, I encourage each of you to fully engage and share your best practices. Share your knowledge with each other and your insights and expertise. Let us learn from each other and foster innovations that will advance our conservation efforts into the future. I see this workshop as not just a forum for capacity building, but a vessel for growth of new ideas and collaboration and networking that will shape the future of biodiversity conservation in the Caribbean. Today, we embark on a transformative journey, a journey that promises not only to safeguard our treasured biodiversity, but also to ensure the sustainable prosperity of our nations. The initiative we are discussing include development of monitoring, evaluation, and learning, and environment and social monitoring system frameworks, a testament to our commitment and strategic response to environment challenges of our time. And we have to be mindful of climate change. We have to be mindful of every year we get storms, we get hurricanes, droughts. And um, one area I need to highlight, pests and diseases. We sometimes forget the dangers and impact pests and diseases. Can, can do to our bio, biodiversity. So invasive species is an is a important area that we need to also focus on. In closing, I hope I, I was not um, very long, but it's not remarked, um, a future address. But I want to urge us, I want to urge us as Caribbean brothers and sisters, um, too many times we, we speak and we don't act. I think that has to be our way of life. And uh, my good friend Albert spoke about mangoes, but I want to give a story of myself. And it's always, it's always good to give story. I remember growing up, um, before you caught a tree, not a tree, but a little shrub, any little shrub, you have to be watching 
to see who is watching for you to do it. So our laws on cutting trees in the, in the 70s and the 80s were so strict. You grew up knowing that you cannot cut a tree, knowing that you cannot pollute the river, knowing that you cannot do these things. I think we've gone away from this. I think we need to strengthen our public awareness. Start from the school, let us bring back the consciousness of, of biodiversity. Let us also recognize the global significance of our efforts. Dominica plays a vital, as I mentioned, not only Dominica, but other Caribbean countries, role in reducing greenhouse gas emission, contributing to global climate change mitigation. Our local efforts have a global impact, and it's imperative that we view our responsibility very seriously as we share borders, as we say, Caribbean and CARICOM. In closing, the path to sustainability and conservation is a collective endeavor. Our actions are our future. I'll repeat this. Our actions are our future. So whatever we do today will depend of, of our generation to come. It depends the involvement, investment, and innovation, all sectors of society. And I'm sure that we will engage the Ministry of Environment, their critical partners, um, the, and I haven't seen the Ministry of Forestry, the Division of Forestry, but they are equally important in our fight against um, not conserving our, our biodiversity. As we continue to strengthen our frameworks and expand our capabilities, let us also depend on our commitment to preserving the Caribbean precious green heritage. Together, let us Forge a future where economic development and environment preservation are not only talk, but are dependent and mutually reinforced in our schools, in our daily life, in our budgeting, in everything that we do. There is a famous African proverb which says, if you want to go far, go together. And in my own words, if you want to go far, you go alone. If you want to go faster, we go together. So I leave that with you. Um, we have to work together. So I want to thank you and again apologize for the Honorable default. I, I know he, he wanted to be there. I want to thank you for your dedication, your passion, and your participation. I look forward to a fruitful discussion and enduring partnership that will emerge from this workshop. So I wish you a successful workshop. Thank you very much. So much, so much, Permanent Secretary, for those words. And with that, we've come to the end of the official opening ceremony. Again, thank you for those inspiring words. I hope it resonates through all of us to do our best this week, to network, um, to take action, um, and to ensure that we can preserve the biodiversity. I wanted to end with the vote of thanks from Erin um, Sanderson, or, or you want to do the video first? All right, so let me just start with a small introduction of the video. The Red Luck is the network of Caribbean, Caribbean, Conserva not Caribbean, Latin American and Caribbean conservation trust funds. It covers 19 countries and a number of, I think, 30 or 40 conservation trust funds in the region. So Latin America and the Caribbean. In, for this year, 2024, and we come together as members to discuss again all of the issues concerning biodiversity, sustainable financing, how can we attract private sector, how can we work together. And we are extremely proud this year to co-host together with the St. Lucia National Conservation Trust Fund, who is the host of the 2024 Red Luck Conference in St. Lucia in October 2024. So warm applause for actually all the representatives of St. Lucia for making this happen. Uh, we are extremely proud and we are here to stand by next to you to make this conference a success. And we'll show the video for now. Thank you so much. With 
covered with approximately 70% of the lush tropical rainforest, Saint Lucia is home to a variety of indigenous plants and wildlife. A coveted gem during the 18th century, the island changed hands 14 times between the British and the French, earning her the title of the Helen of the West. Though only 230 square miles, Saint Lucia has produced two Nobel laureates. The island has a variety of unique resorts, world renowned events, delicious island food. And for a we look forward to welcoming you to St. Lucia next October for Red Light 2024, hosted in collaboration with Red Light, the St. Lucia National Conservation Fund, and the Caribbean Fire Managers. Right. So. That was a small snippet. We'll talk a little bit more about Red Light this year, but again, we. We hope to see you all in Redlock, Permanent Secretary Albert, it's right next door. And with that, let me hand over to my colleague, Erwin. Erwin has been pivotal. Thank you so much, Erwin, for all the support for this workshop. She is our Dominica host um, from the CBF. So thank you so much, Erwin. And um, with that, we will close. We will have a small, you know, coffee break, I would say, before I hand over to the facilitator of the session after this, and that would be Giselle Hall our monitoring and evaluation specialist. So she will take us then through the rest of the day, actually, today and tomorrow. Um, so, Erin, please. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, Tanya. Um, I think I have the simplest and shortest and easiest task, but still equally as important because it's important to express thanks to all those here. Um, to our chair of the CBF board, for her participation, she is very busy. So when I heard she was coming, I'm like, okay, we, we're going to have a really good um, week because she has a lot of a wealth of information that she can share with us. Um, Dominica is like the sister to St. Lucia, so I'm happy she and Craig uh, Henry will be here to support the DNCTF in this week and the following workshop. Um, Carolyn's account of events that change her perspective is similar to all of us. Even I have a personal story about a, a significant climatic event it really made me look differently at how I uh, have an outlook on life and what I do in my personal and professional um, life. And we do look forward to the support of St. Lucia Trust Fund to the Dominica National Conservation Trust. Albert, again, very busy, um, <laughs> but thank you for taking time off to spend this week um, with us and highlighting what the activities of the DNCTF will mean to Dominica. And I'm happy we have a live stream. Emo News has a very wide coverage. And I'm hoping that Dominicans now have an appreciation of the DNCTF and look forward to the activities that you will undertake. Um, I like what you said. Let's not take our rich biodiversity for granted. Conserve today for the future generations. And we look forward to the bright future, that bright future, with the assistance of the DNCTF, supported by CBF and all our other partners, our donors. Yes, Ansem, I'll call you PS of the Nature Island. Thank you for your most gracious welcome. So many important stories, I had to stop taking notes. <laughs> um, but thank you for reminding us of the importance of ESMS and MEL to our biodiversity conservation efforts and the importance of monetizing what we, we do, because we need to show that it makes dollars and cents in biodiversity conservation. Um, don't just speak but act, and our actions are our future. We look forward to the continued support of the government to the CBF and the Dominica National Conservation Trust Fund. I especially want to thank the Ministry of Immigration for at the latest hour um, assisting the participation of our colleagues from the Dominican Republic. I mean, literally they did it overnight for us. <laughs> so I really like to thank um, Minister Blanchard and her team for making that happen. And I would like to acknowledge um, Derek Teofil, who is the Chief Fisheries Officer, also a member of the DNCTF Board for being here today. Um, Simon Walsh, member of the DNCTF Board, and Dawn Francis, a member of the DNCTF Board as well. Thank you for making the time to be here today. NCTF reps, thank you for being here. This workshop is all about you and um, together enhancing our collective ability to make sure our conservation efforts don't harm the environment more than help. 
um, to the CBF staff, Asha, or staff back in, um, well, we are virtual organizations. I cannot even say back in Jamaica or <laughs> anywhere, but our staff all over the Caribbean, um, our finance and admin staff for getting us here today. And I also only have three languages, so I will say thank you very much. Um, merci beaucoup and muchas gracias to all. And I would like to, thank you very much. So our PS cannot stay for the, the balance of the day, but again, we thank him for um, being here with us and maybe have a quick drink before you leave. Yes, uh, a fruit drink <laughs> at that. And we will start promptly at 10. So by 5 to 10, please everybody be back at the desk so we can have our workshop beginning at 10 sharp. Thank you very much. And on behalf of Emonians, we thank you for joining and we wish the CBF and its member partners a successful workshop. Have a good morning everyone and goodbye.